will be world champion. It's real good. Well, that was a great performance. Absolutely. It's a wonderful game and New Zealand's biggest sport with well over 100,000 paid up competitors. One of the things that we learned is that the schools are now starting to play the sport. And I think that's really encouraging, isn't it? Yes, it's incredible, isn't it? Just recently in Kaitaia, an 11 year old won the club championship. Well, that is a little bit worrying, but I tell you what, there are loads of 20 and 30 year olds now playing the game and really enjoying it. Anyway, we had the chance to start at the top. Here we are with Peter Bellis and Millie Khan. Peter, can you take a couple of raw novices like Kathy and myself and, and make us into outstanding international bowlers? I think that's a pretty easy task. You've got to have a bit of talent to start with and there's little doubt that you both have some talent. What a How guy. Much did you pay him? What a guy. <laughs> well, look, I'm really keen to get going. I've got the bowls. We've both got a, a set. We're... Well, we've got a few basics uh, to do first, but let's find a rink and uh, make a start. Looks good here. Follow Why me, Kathy. Okay, we're off. Peter, I've got a size four here. Um, that means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, Philip, uh, we actually have uh, eight different sizes of bowl. Uh, size four uh, is a, probably the most popular bowl uh, that's used in New Zealand, but the size is dependent on your hand. How they measure the bowl, Kathy, that suits you. If your hand goes around like that and right. feels comfortable, well, that's the size you need. You've got big hands. What size I've are you? I've got a big hand. I play with a size four. Basically what happens, uh, our middle finger is in the, the top of the bowl, the crown of the bowl. The other finger is just basically uh, alongside, slightly apart. The bowl just sits in the fingers and the thumb goes in a nice comfortable spot, wherever that may be. And these running rings that we have on the bowl, if they're in line with your forearm, basically there's not much you can go, go wrong with that type of delivery. And the standard thing I need to ask at this stage, bias. Correct. As you can see uh, on your bowl, you've got some uh, swords there. The larger ones always on the outside, the smaller ones always on the inside. We have forehand and backhand, much the same as uh, some of the racket sports. And uh, we ensure that uh, that the uh, that's a backhand, the one was forehand. So pretty important that you get that right because uh, often in this game, uh, if you play a wrong bias, it uh, is costly. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Well, I'm keen to go. What do we do now? Okay. The first thing that we actually do, we do lay the mat in the middle of the rink and as you can see we have a, a rink number which we're on is 10 today and that basically uh, the mat just gets laid in line with that and it's pointing straight up the green and from there we go into our stance on the, on the mat. This game is very much a line and length uh, situation and as far as our stance is concerned it's important that we line up in the direction that we want the bowl to go. So. We're going to play a backhand shot, that's, that's correct. Our right foot actually basically lines up uh, the line that the bowl is going to go, so that's correct. So about there, and, and I'm aiming, actually funnily enough, I'm aiming more towards the next door rink, and that's where I'm taking my guideline, correct. is that right? Yes, that's correct. The left foot just comes up alongside it, like that. And uh, we now just check the grip, make sure that the bias, we should always check that before we make a delivery. We've done that, and then it's just a matter of a just a normal walking step is the delivery uh, step that we require. I've got my hand over the top of the bowl. Is that okay? Is that acceptable? Not, or not? not a problem. Okay, my stance is right. Should yes, I? Yes, basically uh, the feet point the line, uh, hips and shoulders stay square to the aiming line. Just a normal walking step, get down uh, reasonably low, and the bowl just rolls off the fingertips. So the lower you go, generally the better the result. Correct. We've got to try and get the bowl away without a bump. Okay, here goes. Here's the first one. Well, that's not too bad. What do you mean, not too bad? I think that's unbelievable. <laughs> that's ended up on the next door rink. Now I feel all backwards, but we'll give it a try. Oh, not enough that's wheat specs. quite all right. You had a good line there, Kathy. The line is something that you've got to make a judgement on uh, when you start a match. Uh, you look at basically the speed of the green. If you've rolled the jack to start with, that gives you some idea of the speed. And then you've got to make a judgement of just whereabouts you think the, the arc of the bowl is going to be. And basically what happens, the angle the bowl goes away from the centre of the rink remains the same, irrespective of whether it's a short length or a long length, remains basically the same. And then you've just got to continue to put the bowls down that same line. Can you judge speed 
by bringing your hand back further, or, or how, how do you do that? Just Speed, uh, as far as the line is concerned, we can actually draw out on the green the arc the bowl's going to take. We can actually see that. As far as the speed that we're going to put into the delivery, well, that's a judgment that you have to make yourself. Uh, and certainly, if you hold the bowl higher, bigger backswing, bigger step, the bowl will go further. The same if it's reversed, smaller step, smaller backswing, it won't go so far. Uh, weight is something uh, that no one can actually say you've got to put X amount of weight into it. It's something that uh, you've got to make a decision on. Okay, it's your turn. I'll just show you how it's done. Unbelievable. Well, that's not a bad start. I'm giving the game away. How's it going, Kathy? Well, I tell you what, the way mine are bouncing down there, it looks like I'm playing netball. I saw the greenkeeper yeah. running around looking at you, so I think you might ca be causing some trouble. Oh, no. Look, I tell you what, I had a really, well, I thought it was okay, my first bowl, and then Peter sent one down. I decided that it's time to uh, look for a change. So, could Millie help me? She's been very patient with me. How about I go and have a lemonade with Peter and leave you to it? Great. Okay. Okay. Please, okay. Please okay, help Philip. me, Millie. <laughs> about the right position for my fingers. Yeah, so we just need to have a look at this. We've really got to get those fingers in between these running lines. So oh, okay. there we are. Now there we are, that's looking far, far more uh, the conventional grip. <laughs> fingers are nice and straight along the bowl's running edge and that's what you've got to have. Okie dokie, so we'll give it a shot. Right. Philip, would you like to try a bit of um, water on your fingers? So water, now this, Oh, I see, that, that does give, because this is the thing, the bowl is so slippery. Yes. It tends to give you much better I grip. That's fine, yes, it gives me more grip. What we're just going to look at is, um, is just getting the coordination a little better so that uh, we allow the, the weight of the bowl to take our arm back and when we get back to about the upright, uh, then we take the step. Uh -huh. Just stepping a little too soon. That's right, feet are pointed in the right direction. Well, other than a little bit of a bump, that is a lot better. That was a much better, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Practice. See, when go. you have the experts, what I'd like to see you do is, for balance, put your hand down on your knee, rest your hand on your knee. Right. That's an interesting one, and I know mm. Peter and I talked about that before, mm. and I, I thought it was a complaint, you know, a leg complaint <laughs> no. they were suffering from, but obviously... It gives you more balance. Okay, I'll try one with that. So, that's... Now leave the bowl the, in my right hand. Mm -hmm. You put your hand on the, on the knee now? On the knee. Mm. So one-handed. Oh, this will be interesting. You know, that is really interesting. That is quite a difference. It does, it, it gives you more stability. That's right. I like that. Alright. That will improve the balance even more if you stick your hand on your knee. Just important to keep that arm just out away from your That's body right. so that uh, get past the hips. Excellent. There we are. No speed wobbles at all there. Absolutely. It's even gone vaguely straight. Well, that was the first session over, and we were all feeling pretty confident. In fact, you picked up a few little points there of interest. The back swing for you was a bit of a problem. That's right. It's all a question of coordination, so they keep telling me. And of course, it was great having Peter there to say, move your fingers here and, and aim for that. In real terms, it is. It's a very interesting point. You think you might have it right, and then there are just subtle differences that, that make all the difference. So then we started talking about the shots in the game and the strategy required. As we uh, have learned, this is the jack. Uh, the object of the game is to get as close as possible to the jack and to score uh, is that your bowl is closer than your opponent. And we start the match by rolling the jack. Uh, it's important that we actually roll it to the length that we wish to. It may be short, long or medium. And uh, that's the first part of the, the game. Very important that we actually uh, stand in the correct place on the mat. The jack, unlike the bowl, doesn't have a bias. So it is straight down the middle of the rink. And this dictates, of course, whether it's going to be a short or a long end. Correct. Looks pretty good to me. Now what's Millie going to do? Now what happens, Millie aligns the jack into the centre of the rink, and we then start the game from there. Rightio. That's it. So this is it, your opening shot. 
Yes, the draw shot this is the basic shot of the game. It's played 90% of the time. And a lot of the other shots that are played in the game are only variations of the draw. Instead of perhaps drawing to the jack, you're drawing to someone else on the green. So the draw shot, the most important shot. Everyone has to, to basically perfect this. Good technique it allows you to play consistently good draw shots. And hopefully I can do that for you right now. We're not going to say another thing. Peter, it's all concentration here for you. This is very important. This is feet. One in one. For a good draw bowler, I mean, how important is it to have that skill right at the start? It dictates the game. First bowl and it gets close, always puts the opponent under some pressure. So getting the first bowl close there, the draw shot uh, as I played there on the back end, a little bit on the tight side, but a handy one to start with. And I'm sure Millie will be able to do something better than that. All right, well, this is your chance. Well, let's see what you can do. Not a bad effort. <laughs> <laughs> Looks pretty good to me. Well, we've got the basic of the game. What's the next move? Well, Philip, we've rearranged this head to, sh to demonstrate the resting shot, which is very similar to the draw shot. Uh, basically, it's, it's uh, just a little more weight required and taking the place of the shot bowl. So it requires a similar type of line, but just a fraction more weight. And that we'll... The shot that we all need to learn to play. Millie, they tell me you're very good at this, so I can't wait to see you in action. Anyway... <laughs> That's what you want, mate. There you are. The resting shot. We have to realise with the resting shot, it's one of the most difficult shots to play in the game, purely because of the amount of weight that's required. Just enough weight to shift the bowl and stay there itself, where all the other shots you can play with a lot more weight, less grass line, they're a lot easier to play. We are going to try and demonstrate the follow through shot, where I'm attempting to push one of the bowls through and follow through and take that bowl's place. A bit more weight on it? A bit more weight, yes. Right, give us a shot then. Right. The main difference with this is that we've just got to play a little more weight than what we've been playing with the resting shot. So what we've seen from the draw to the resting to the follow through shot, more weight, less grass line, and uh, these shots become a little more easier to play. The next shot we're going to look at is the trail shot. And this is a shot that's used when we want to move the jack to one or more of our own bowls. A very important shot to play. It's a bowl in which you get big turnarounds in an end. And so it's, once again, line and length playing through the jack to shift the jack to one of our own bowls. The weight of this shot is, is important. It's in between the rest and the trail shot and the fact that we've got to just move the jack a certain distance. So it may be uh, two thirds of a metre or a metre. Uh, so weight becomes important because if we shift it too far it may be against us, if we don't shift it enough likewise it may be against us. So weight is important in this shot. We've now set up a head uh, to demonstrate the run shot which is starting to get into the more forceful shots in the game. Once again, line and length, the faster you send the bowl down the less grass line you require. It's a shot that's used when the head is against you, maybe three or four shots down uh, you may have some back bowls, so you try and run the jack in the ditch, disturb some of the bowls to reduce the count. This sounds more like me, Peter. I'm it does, to yes. Uh, th th I have to say that uh, most of us fellas like to play these shots, uh, the more forceful shots in the game. So here goes.
The important thing about these shots, of course, is the control. You've got to have control when you're playing these uh, forcing shots. So basically, it's the same as what we do for the others. And that's got rid of a couple of bowls from there. Well done. By absolute good fortune, uh, Peter. I just happen to have mine here. I thought you Wouldn't might have had one. Wouldn't be any chance that I could... Uh, <coughs> <laughs> Is there any way you can stop him? <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think he's been practicing these shots. Well done. How's that? Yes. Oh, <laughs> there there we in. are. Beginner's <laughs> luck. All right. Many of you will remember 1984 when Willie Wood and Peter Ballas fought out the World Championship final. And one shot used to great effect in that by Peter was the drive. Well, Peter, I'm rearing to go. I want to learn this one. So what am I going to do right? Is it? I've got the grip. I'm right. Philip, that's basically the grip for the draw. But when we come to play the drive, we actually do have to change it a little bit. We actually get the thumb coming down the side. The fingers just spread out a little bit and the ball sits further back in the hand. So we just have a little bit more control on the backswing we're going to go back fairly quickly and through even faster. Okay, and, and, and a lot of weight. A lot of weight, so we're actually looking at a line uh, just to the right if we're going to play the forehand of the target area. The drive is the spectacular shot where you're out basically to destroy the end and uh, again got to have a reasonable amount of control and hopefully you get it online. We'll give it a best. And there we are! Well done! How was that? Going over. Okay, Peter, we've seen the show business stuff with Mr. Leishman here, but that's all very well. You've really got to talk about the strategies of the game, and that's where the shots we're about to see come in, isn't it? Right. We've got a situation here where a position bowl is needed. In the game of singles, uh, in this case, Millie has two shots. The three bowls at the back are all against her. So if the jack gets trailed back, she may be three or four down. So what she does is she play down on the forehand side, looking to get a bowl around the back to cover those. And that is absolutely perfect. Split those three bowls up. Couldn't do it better if you went down and placed it, Millie. <laughs> well, with that last shot of Millie's, we're really starting to see that where the tactics and strategy come in. And there's a few tricky shots you can use like that, aren't there? That's right, Cathy. And uh, we're perhaps looking at another shot, uh, the block shot, which is used in a situation that we have now where there is two good bowls alongside the jack. The opposition have some back bowls. We also have a back bowl ourselves, and we're trying to block one of Philip Leishman's famous drives now. And so what Not we're trying... Yeah. Well, it's going to become one of the most famous shots that the game's ever seen, I think. <laughs> and, uh... I like it. I like it. Come on, <laughs> so Millie's going to try and block that uh, type of shot now by finishing in line with those bowls, which will stop uh, the drive. So this shot can be anywhere from probably five, uh, five to twenty feet back away from the head. Drawing to a spilled jack. Now we've been on a big learning curve, I've got to admit it, and we certainly have learned a few things, but boy you're trying to confuse us now aren't you? That's right, the spilled jack or displaced jack requires some skills uh, that are a little different to what we've been doing so far. Again it's just a draw shot but uh, with the jack being shifted off the centre of the rink, we have some difficulties to overcome. Firstly, the bowl is going to go out further in its arc, away from the normal running lines that we've been uh, playing on. The other thing that we've got to be careful is that we get back within the boundaries of the rink. So if we go out too wide, then we're going to be out of bounds. So Millie's going to demonstrate that to us. And also, because of the new line that she has to take, it's going to be a little different in weight than what it would be if the jack was in the centre of the rink. Very good. Well done. 
Uh, one of the shots that we use a lot in the game is either drawing round or underneath a short bowl. Sometimes uh, it, it may be just right on the line to get exactly to the jack. We need to beat our opponent's bowl to score the shot, so we may have to come around it or underneath it. And that is done by the positioning on the map to give us that uh, different angle. And uh, we'll just do it and demonstrate that now. Our normal map position is for our feet is basically in the centre and that will take us uh, to the jack. To come round this bowl now, we just move over to the left hand side of the map, bearing in mind that our foot has to be on or above the mat at the time of delivery. And so what we do from that position, we continue to bowl the, down the same line that we intended to from the centre position, but in this new position it will take us just round that bowl. Well, we've just demonstrated coming round a bowl, and that was from shifting to the left-hand side of the mat. Of course, Kathy, for left-handers, it's the exact opposite. Now to come underneath the bowl, we shift across to the right-hand side of the mat, keep the same grass line, and the bowl will just drop underneath that and draw the shot. Close. Very nice. Close. Yeah. Okay. These are flapjacks. They're a coaching aid that we use. They just stick in the ground like so, and uh, the bowl can go overneath, uh, over right. the top of them, and they flick back up. So, a very valuable coaching aid. Okay. Oh, I like this. Ha, ha, ha. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I don't like it. Now, what did I do wrong there, Pete? Not enough green, yes. And, and often it starts just with the feet. The feet have actually got to be pointing the line, and, uh, and they were perhaps just a little too straight. So you just got to get your feet out pointing more to the line that the bowl's going to take. Hips and shoulders stay square to the aiming line, and then it's just a matter of stepping forward and rolling it off your fingertips. A oh, bit wobbly again, and too far to the middle, I think. Are you keeping your eye on the flapjacks, No, Kathy? yeah, that's what I did wrong. I was looking in the wrong direction. Yes. I've got the Phillip. problems that a lot of bowlers, or new bowlers have, is that they actually look at the jack rather than along the line that they want the bowl to take. So it's important you look along that line. The bowl will do the work and bring it back to the centre of the rink, Trust to the bowl. jack. Trust your bowl. Correct. That's much better, Philip. You follow your feet. I have a feeling yes. that this is going to be quite a good bowl which has suddenly gone wrong. <laughs> well, it's a nice position bowl. And one of the things about the game is that if you have bowls past the jack, they're always in play because the jack very seldom comes forward. It generally shifts back. But again, you've got perfect line. It's finished right in the centre of the ring. And one of the things that perhaps we can just look in your delivery at the moment is that, that you're moving all the way through it. And what we try and do within the delivery is eliminate the, the body movement so it's a nice, strong, stable position that we have and we just let the arm come through and do the work. So we've just got to eliminate the body sort of coming down and then coming back up again so it just stays down there through the delivery. Putting in the back bowls, Kathy, in case you have a drive. You did say that as you go forward you should be positioned with your nose virtually at the toe. Correct. That's uh, the timing point, the delivery point of the... Uh, of the bowl. Uh, nose to toes is something that we uh, we look at uh, coaching uh, and that gives you a, a, basically the position that the body has got to be in at point of delivery. So you know it's, it's a matter of, of trying to get in that position and once you've let the bowl go to hold it there. So uh, it's important that if we've been able to hold the position once we've let it go and I'll perhaps just demonstrate that without a bowl, it ensures that we've got correct balance. So. We've gone to there, we've let it go, and we're able to hold that position. And normally what we say, count to three seconds before you come up. And that shows that you've got good balance, you're not tilting one way or the other or overbalanced. 
Over the few days we spent with Millie Khan and Peter Ballas, we got to know a few things about the game of bowls, and I must admit, I learnt a few things. Yes, well, we saw just how much you learned and how much we listened when we got down to business and uh, played a few eels. So, Millie, where do you want it? Oh, looking okay. How about that? It's going to be a very long end. Now it's time to get nervous. Looking good. All right, Kathy, this is the big test. My first competitive game. Well, that's the only bowl you're going to see from the first end. The rest, for Kathy and me, were most unedifying. Oh, such is a start. Such is a start. No chalk. With the jack almost off the rink, my partner Millie showed what she was made of, right putting us it. three up before Peter's second bowl. Very nice. Holding three. Not after this one. That showed what I Peter's made game of. Now. Hopefully. We'll need a measure. And so we did. Philip had nothing much to skite about in the second end, but I did. You'd best describe most of both Philip and my bowls as strategic. At this stage, Philip and Millie were one down. Oh, you like this? Oh, well played oh, here. Save the best for last. Great shot. Come down. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Good bowl. Now let's see what the skips can do. Well, this is an interesting one, Millie. Thank you. Give it a block. <laughs> See, it just proves how deceptive that green is running because uh, certainly it's different line, isn't it? So Peter are trying the backhand. And I tell you what, this is quite a good bowl. Splitting right through the middle there. Good bowl, Peter. Our bowl. Uh, we're two in. down. Now, Millie's going to try that backhand. Might be a bit heavy. Millie's long bowl wasn't as bad a move oh. as it seemed. That's the intriguing thing about this game. With the scores square, Peter and I could win. Good, Peter. This could be a winning shot. The old advice about back bowls proved two, uh, true. Three. I only have two, Philip, so have a good look. That's our bowl at the back, is it? Yep, that's you. We're down one. Only one. Oh. So there we are. I tell you what, it's been a very comfortable win here for the... Uh, <laughs> not too comfortable, not too comfortable. <laughs> Bad luck, Kathy. Uh, but keep up your interest in the game. I think you've got a great future. Well, it's all very well to play the game, but you have to have the right attitude to get to the top. Well, Peter Ballas has certainly done that, and when he spoke to you, Cathy, he seemed to know where he's going. Yes, Cathy, uh, it's something that I started uh, quite some time ago uh, when I looked upon uh, what I was doing within the sport and what I needed to succeed, when basically I, I had the technical uh, skills there, but perhaps the mental skills weren't there, and I just took it from other books I'd read, um, put them into the bowling terms, and found they were working for me. Can you give us some specific examples of things that have worked you know, on the green for you? Well, I suppose the, the best example was in 1984 when I won the World Championships. Um, I visualised exactly what was going to happen that day. I'd go out for my run every day, and certainly in the last uh, quarter of the run, I visualised what was going to happen. I visualised uh, winning the game easily, but there's not much fun in that. Uh, and so I then visualised uh, probably to the other extreme when it came down to the last bowl came uh, to the situation where 
the particular shot that was required and I find that uh, in my game probably the weakest shot is my backhand runner. And so I visualised winning the game with my weakest shot and uh, so I did this for months and uh, came August of that year, came that particular day, Willie Wood and I played for the final, in the final of the World Championship in Aberdeen in front of uh, 7,000 Scottish fans. Uh, the game was 20 all, last end, um, Wood drew the shot with his last ball and I had this backhand runner to play. And quite amazingly, I, I knew I was going to get it before I'd even uh, went back to the mat because I'd played it over my mind a thousand times. And it was just a matter of going back, picking the ball up and letting it go. Took the shot out and was the world champion. Well, the sceptics might say that in a game like bowls, it's all technique, it's all shot placement and choosing the right shots and getting them right at the time. But surely, you know, you've proved that's wrong. Well, I think that is all part of the game, but uh, you know, we look at players and then their body language and, and find that uh, you can tell exactly what's going on inside them. And if they're having a struggle with themselves, then that's obviously a time in which uh, you can take advantage of that. Uh, I won a major tournament in Australia, an international event uh, a few years ago, when I happened to notice my opponent in the final handshake the first time he went to deliver a bowl, realising that um, you know, my concentration levels were even better than what they perhaps might have been and uh, I made a seven shot uh, gap at the start and that's what I won by. So those are little things that perhaps you learn with experience. The so Glendowie Greens are Mania Greens Toto, Toto and obviously suited oh, Millie very well. Based. How does that vary from what you normally play on? This is sand based and Mania Toto, Philip. Um, well, the South Island Greens are mostly Mania Toto, which I've played a lot on and they're beautiful greens down there. Our green at Matamata is uh, Cochula Green, which is soil based which is very good. Um, Tiff Dwarf in Australia, that's a different weed again, and um, they're very quick, but if it rains, they get very heavy. If you're travelling up and down the country, obviously you experience different climatic conditions. How does that affect uh, the, the run? Well, it does affect the, um, the run of the, uh, the bowls, but um, the further south you go, the better the greens, I feel. They're a lot, um, a lot quicker down, especially in the need. Overseas players coming to New Zealand, do they find it a little difficult to adapt to New Zealand They green? do find it difficult because they play a narrower line and when they come out here they've got to, if there's um, a real draw on the green, they've got to send their bowls out and bring them in. But it all depends on the bowls they're using as well. Do you change bowls for different places around the world? Uh, international play, like when we go to Scotland, um, they supply, Henselite supplies the bowls there and we play with uh, a medium weight bowl. Here in New Zealand I play with a heavy weight bowl because of the wind, we get a lot of wind here and our greens are quicker. Of course we all know about the great individual achievements of players like Peter and Millie but they've also got a major role to play in the group games, the, the fours, the triples and of course the pairs. So Millie perhaps you could start off because I understand you're the boss lady. Oh, well I'm, the, I'm called a skipper when I'm playing in the fours and pairs. Um, well first of all the, the role of the lead the objective of the lead's position is to get the her bowls as close to the jack as she can. Basically the, the, the lead in any of the, the team games, uh, their job is to lay the foundation for the players coming behind and uh, it's certainly a very important part of the, the team games. Uh, in the fours match for instance the number two also has to be a, a good draw player like the lead but perhaps has to have some of the other shots as well. Uh, which are required to be played if the opposition are getting them in close. So they have to have command of some of the forcing shots. And the three in the skip roles, well, they really have to be all-rounders, uh, have to be able to play all the shots. So quite often, I think you mentioned earlier, that the lead is often the player who's least experienced. Well, th to start with, when people start the game, uh, they are put in the lead position. But probably as they get through the game and the strengths and weaknesses that they have, uh, you get your good draw players, and often they are some of the uh, the more experienced players uh, who drop back into the lead position, uh, get those bowls nice and handy, and uh, as a skip, uh, certainly the first person that I want to select on my side is, is the lead who can get two bowls close for me. For bowlers like yourselves who are very experienced, I suppose the challenge of being the skip is always the greatest challenge. Well, there's more shots to be played, a greater range of shots are played, and, and not all players have that range. Uh, and that's why the different positions for different types of players. Uh, but you know, certainly you're the captain of the ship, uh, you make the decisions, although you will consult with your teammates on, on what happens. But at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. 
Well, is there a lot of consultation? We think of, of bowls as being quite quiet and sedate. I mean, are you sort of really rallying around each other and sending out the advice? Certainly, and, and uh, it's something that perhaps uh, we don't see a, enough of in New Zealand. If we look at uh, especially the UK players and watch the way that they play the game, they seem to get a lot more enjoyment out of it because there's more involvement. And it looks more exciting too to watch, doesn't it, Peter? It is. Uh, you know, it's, it's perhaps it's the New Zealand style that is different, and, and perhaps uh, um, at times we consider that they go overboard a little bit. Uh, but it's, uh, it's always interesting to play against them, it's always interesting for spectators and I think that's also a major difference in the UK, spectators get more involved. There is loud cheering and clapping when good bowls are being played. We're here basically in New Zealand, we're inclined to have polite applause. Uh... Like after <laughs> your drive. <laughs> but like that? Yes, well, you know, if, if your drive had been in the, the UK, there would have been thunderous applause. Uh, uh, standing ovation, thanks. Yeah, of course. Standing ovation. Well, I've got to tell you, I'm still not sure whether I should be playing left-handed or right-handed, and we certainly made fools of ourselves out there, didn't we, Philip? I've still. got the answer for you, Cathy. It's got to be right-handed. Okay. But I tell you what we did do, and one of the highlights of our few days spent with Peter Bellis and Millie Khan was to watch them in action in a head-to-head -head competition. And boy, oh boy, it was worth it. It was a cracker. Tails, Peter. Well, I'll take the first uh, bowl. So, Millie. Have a good game. Will do. Well, what an amazing prospect here. Peter Ballas against Millie Khan. This is where we really get shown up. Actually, I would have quite liked to have taken on Peter, you know, judging on mm -hmm. my previous form, but I wasn't asked. Yeah, there Funny was that. a reason for that. Funny that. Well, perhaps mm -hmm. you might be playing the winner, Philip. Uh, well, that may be the case. Good, good luck anyway. Actually, the loser has to spend another four hours coaching us. How's that would that? be a very yes. good idea too. Yeah. Well, it looks as though it's going to be a reasonably short end. The first two bowls were superbly drawn just behind the jack. Textbook play. Peter's third bowl wasn't one of his best, falling a metre or so short. But Millie's, in the end, was worse. Now, Peter, Millie's got quite a distinctive style. She doesn't have any backswing. She steps forward and then must have very strong wrists. Yes, it's a, a push style, which... Uh, not that many New Zealand players use, it's a style that's used uh, more predominantly overseas, but uh, as can be seen there is numerous styles that, uh, that bowlers uh, use. If you have a look at all the top players, they all do something a little different to each other, and certainly Millie's style has uh, proven to be very successful, not only in New Zealand but also overseas. And I tell you what, this is not a bad shot. Well, I think I've got Peter's bowl. Might go right through the middle. No. Oh, oh. That's very nice, Millie. Okay. <laughs> Asking to seem that was well weighted, Bob, but just a fraction tight, turned me up for shot. So uh, you're not complaining. I'm either. not complaining about that. It's nice to get a little help from your opponent at times. Hopefully, I don't do the same thing. Pretty good, Peter. It's just sliding in the back there. Well, that bowl. He's just sitting that bowl back. Millie's final bowl was a little short. Oh, I like this. No, I haven't got the weight. And that's a bad bowl. And imagine how an end turns around. Millie had shot when she came to play a third bowl. Played a little bit narrow, knocked me up for shot. And then with my last bowl, I turned Millie's nearest bowl back, which was this one here and I made three shots. The second end was all Peter's and it was capped by his fourth bowl. This will just be another similar type of bowl. Trying to add another shot. Good bowling, Peter. Oh, and that's not too bad. So Millie, we're in a really interesting situation now because Peter's holding three. Mm -hmm. what, what are you gonna, would you drive at the stage? Is a drive appropriate? Uh, no, Philip, I'll try and play a run shot and try and pick the jack up. I've got one back, back bowl and one on the wing there and hopefully I can take the jack with me. Good stuff. Okay, let's have a look. Show us your form here. Nothing. Oh, oh bad luck. Mm -hmm. 
Fair this enough. is the moment, Philip, when, when you're holding a good end and your opponent has the last bowl. It's a helpless stage where you've, you've done your piece and uh, you've just got to hope that your opponent misses. Is that why you had your hand over your eye? <laughs> I, I was like that a few years ago, but I always look these days. Peter two. So that's two. Right. So five and nil. Five, five. Nil. After two ends. Okay, Mill. This is it. This is going to be your one. Okay, thank you. We've well, given them two. One of the great two. things about Millie is that she shows great fighting qualities, and I'm sure that. Uh, <laughs> Millie improved in the third end. In fact, for sheer consistency from both players, this end was a masterpiece. With every bowl less than a metre from the jack. Being 5 nil ahead, is this the time to employ some tactics like a block and various things like that or not? Not as, not as yet. Uh, it's early in the game. 5-0, uh, it's important that you don't relax at this stage. Often what happens, you get a bit of a break and you think, oh, the game's going nicely and, and you relax a little and uh, perhaps don't play as well. Often we say to players, you've got to play as if you're one behind all the time, have that type of feeling. Now. Mm -hmm. That's a better one, drawn the it? shot. So this is your last bowl last now, Peter. Bowl. Yes, and I'll be just playing something similar, just trying to sit onto my bowl, drop in for shot. Happy with it? Well, I might be just on the high side. I might get caught on my front one. Just oh, got oh, caught. <laughs> now what, Peter? Would you like me to go and have a look for you? So I will you employ... Mm -hmm. What sort of shot will you employ probably now, Millie? Well, if I was holding shot, I'd be attempting to change my hand and try and come under Peter's bowl there, the wing bowl. On behalf of Millie? No, this one's closer, Peter's one. The front one? Yep. Thank you, Kathy. So I'll stay there. Make hand. it a good one, Millie. Just a little bit of weight required here. I've gone too wide. It's turning in. Come on, push me over. Well, Millie's played three uh, very good bowls. And uh, hopefully I've just managed to uh, get one in. Oh. oh, well, this is a bit closer. Very interesting. It might be just interesting, Philip, just to look at the different bowls that have been used uh, by Millie and myself. As you notice, Millie's got some grips on hers. It's a Henselite bowl. Uh, I use a Henselite also, but uh, no grips. So it's just a plain surface. Oh, I see the grips here, you mean? Correct, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Interesting. And so, Millie gave me a bit of a story. These are the only bowls that she's played with for the last 30 years. No, not 30 years. They're over 30 years they're old. Over 30 they years. belong to Jack Somerville. And he was a famous New Zealand uh, player that won a Commonwealth Games gold medal in 1974. Mm -hmm. And your favourite right. set? Favourite set. The fourth end. Well, we've gone a bit longer this time. So basically a change of length, and uh, that sometimes happens either because you want to change it or you just don't uh, roll the jack in the correct position. And, and probably that's the case in, in this. I really didn't want it as long as that because I've been dominating these shorter lengths. So a correction is required as far as the weight on this particular end is concerned. The game picked up and after 15 ends, Millie had the lead 15-14, making good progress with long ends. You know you've only got another bowl. Correct. Uh, and uh, not so bad on this end because Millie hasn't played uh, her first two particularly well, although she's drawn the shot now. So you know, the most that I can lose on this end is two uh, if I don't draw the shot with this one. But uh, that was a good correction from Millie there. Wait to it. Uh, I've been playing the back end. Peter's mm -hmm. playing that end. So I Edit switched that to Peter's end. Edit that bit. This has got to be better. This is a good bowl. Yes. As soon as it left my hand, I knew that I was going to be close. Nice one, Peter. Oh. The secret of the game is correction. Just took a little longer than I would have liked. We're we'll playing a little bit of weight, but it's just going to be under grass. Under grass again. Yeah. As you can see, the bowl really does turn a lot. To
What do you think? I hope it's got... Looks pretty good oh. to me, Millie. Come on. Nice. Millie will be pleased with that one. Looks very yeah. good. Oh, ho, ho. Great shot. Back now in the, the game. pressure's on Peter Bell. The game continued with fairly long ends, and Millie was doing very nicely. Millie won. In fact, Peter won. was beginning to get a little aggressive. Well, I might just play a little bit of a, a runner here, Philip, to see if I can get the shot ball out and stay there myself. Played it, that'll take mine out. Oh, not quite the right bowling. direction. Hmm. The news is all bad, Peter. <laughs> oh, looking nice, oh. Millie. Oh! What's the story now? Millie's holding. Millie holding. What a comeback. What a comeback. Well, that's going to be round about. Not the own, Peter. Push it in. Oh, well done. Well, look You've at done that. done it. Well done. Well done. Sneak through. Very good. Well good done. to watch. We used a lot of green this time, Millie. We used more green and I hope I've got the weight. That's two. Well, Philip, I might play a little attacking shot here. See if I can disturb those two bowls or get the jack. Well, still one down, but a lot better. This was to be a real turnaround as Peter's error gave Millie even more of a chance. She looks like she's going to do that. Nice going, Millie. That's two again. Lovely to watch. So who would have believed that we could get it down like this, eh? 20 all after 20 ends, and it's first to 21. First round, Philip, and Millie's okay, done a great job. Hang loose here. Kathy. All right, I'll be just stay there. <laughs> okay, you'll be right. You. This is it. Been so much, Millie, for a long I'll time. Say. <laughs> Peter's first bowl seemed likely to seal the game. How are you feeling, Peter? Well, it's going to be the shot. Been good. Oh, well bowled. That's the one, all right. Well, that's an encouraging start, Peter. Well, now the pressure's on, Millie. Pressure's on now, Philip. That's the one that I was looking for, Philip. Well, a good time to pull it out, isn't it? 20 all. Well, that wasn't a bad attempt. So Peter, in such a tight situation as this, the name of the game is just keeping it, uh, you've got shot, so that's all you have to do is preserve it. Right, I want to get another <coughs> second one here though, so that in case Millie takes that bowl out, I'll still have shot. And that's almost a twofold oh. one, it's almost a block as well mm. as uh, another shot. So Millie, the backhand looks pretty tight there, what will you do now? I'll still keep to the um, forehand Philip, and I hope to play with a wee bit more weight onto the shot bowl. Might be underweighted again, is it? Yes. Going to turn too quick. Good try. Well, it's widened the target area, Philip, and it's important I get another bowl up there, preferably just past the jack. What do you think, Kathy? It's very good. No, I think he's right. He's gone a bit too far. Well, I'm very pleased with that. Oh, yes. Last opportunity, Millie. What can you do now? 
Well, I'm, I'm just going to try and play the same shot. Well, it's in the target area, Philip. Looks very good. Ho oh ho! She's great done shot. It. Well, Philip, a great shot from Millie, and this is, I must go down and have a look, and this is what happens in uh, Port and Bowl to be played. I've got to come down and have a look exactly what I've got to do here to get the shot back. Millie's made it very difficult for you, hasn't she? Perfect shot. And basically all I've got now is to continue down the backhand with a little bit of weight, just trying to get onto my bowl, which will kick Millie's out, and leave me with a couple of shots. But uh, this one down the front here is a little bit of a problem. Uh, it's very close to the line that I need to be taking, so I've just got to get past that and hopefully can do it. All we can say is, Peter, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all down to one bowl. It's got a lot of weight. Just yeah, off. Just wow. That bowl of mine it. was a good block. Congratulations, Millie. Thank you very Looking much. Looking very Philip. good. Thank you. It was that extra massage, I know. I think so, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Look at that. Well, you tried, Peter. Well, it was probably just a little quick to turn, but uh, what a great shot from Millie. Yeah. Thank well you, done. Peter. Yeah. Obviously, a consistent style, a strict routine, is the essence of good play. As you can see here, from shots we took over several days, and for all his shots except the drive, forehand and backhand, long and short, Peter is absolutely consistent, from adjusting his glasses to the follow-through. First thing that we do is make sure that we've got the correct grip of the bowl. There has to be a starting point, a routine. We generally do this behind the mat before we start, making sure that the grip is correct, we know exactly what shot we're going to play before stepping onto the mat. Once we're on the mat, it's important that we get our feet in the correct position that it points to the line that the bowl is going to take. And then we're actually visualising the arc of the bowl, just what it's going to do for us when we deliver. Then it's a matter of making sure that we get into the correct body position as we go through the delivery. Nice smooth delivery. Bowl goes out of the hand, along the line we intend it to go. And there it is, perfect shot. Millie's completely different delivery also has a strict routine. This is the only way to control the fine differences in green and weight that make the game. What I do is get down and pick up my bowl, make sure I've got the right bias, line myself up where the jack is, the length of the jack, and come back to a point where my bowl is going to turn and let my bowl go. The whole thing is just automatic. One of the many positive aspects about being involved in bowls as a sport is that it gives you an opportunity to explore some new social outlets and of course to make some new friends. That's right, all the people here at this club come from different walks of life. But they'll let anybody join a club, maybe even TV presenters. No. <laughs> but what they do all share, what they do have in common is a love, a love of bowls. Uh, I enjoy the game. The game is just a massive. It's wonderful to play the, the company and the fun and the laughs. You get your serious side, but it is it's fun and the people you play with. It's, it's just people. It's a people's game. I had been playing golf and I wasn't terribly good at golf and a lot of my friends joined the Glendale Bowling Club so I decided to, to join and uh, I've found it a very interesting game. I'm playing quite well. I think I'm holding my own with a lot of the blokes and uh, really enjoying it. I remember the year I joined, it was the general joke that you moved from the tennis club onto the bowling green, but it's not really the case. It's interesting for everyone. It's a very friendly club here, and we've made a lot of very nice friends out of the club. My husband plays too, that was how I started, because um, you know, he needed Rovi mad, he loved it so much. <laughs> I, I, you know, I lost my leg in the war, and I uh, could not play any other game. And when I retired in 1983, 
uh, somebody suggested, why don't you take bows? And I never looked back. Um, well, every time I go out to play, I always go out with the intention of trying to win whatever I'm playing in. But it's um, meeting, meeting you, you know, the people, the girls around the green, and even the men when we're playing in, in the mixed. And it's just nice getting out there amongst them all. Certainly from my point of view, um, the major events we play in, it's like a reunion each time. You meet the guys again, uh, you may not have seen them for 12 months. Uh, and without doubt, you know, competition on the green is extremely fierce. But once you come off the green uh, into the clubhouse, what's happened out there has happened. You cannot change it. And so it's very much uh, enjoying each other's company afterwards and perhaps over a glass of ale as well. When you look back on the success you've had, if you were someone watching this today, and getting the advice of Peter Ballas, someone who started the game of bowls and then became a world champion. What advice would you be giving to someone who's just starting off now? Without doubt, uh, the only way to be, be able to play the game up to the standard that you're capable of is to get some coaching. And without doubt in New Zealand we have a very good coaching scheme now. And so it's very much getting the right advice early in the piece. Uh, bad habits are very hard to change once they become habits. So coaching is important early in the piece. And from then on, it's very much a practice situation. I spent hours and hours on the green in the early years just practicing and practicing, getting the delivery right, the techniques correct. And once you've established that, then it's up to yourself, basically, how much you desire to go as far in the game as you can. Millie, from your point of view, uh, you have a distinctively different style to Peter. Do you believe it's important that people nurture their own style and, and have their own style in bowls? Well, no, I agree with Peter. I'd advise anybody that's just taking up bowls like you and Kathy, if you wanted to join, to have coaching. I think it's a must for, for new bowlers. I think you think it's a must for us full stop, don't <laughs> no, you? No, no, for all bowlers. <laughs> but what you say, Philip, is correct. It is important that, it, that everyone does develop their own style. If you have a look at the top men and women bowlers, they all do it slightly different. They all have the quite different styles. Basically the techniques are the same, but the styles are slightly different. So within that, it's important that uh, we develop a style that suits the individual rather than try and turn out clones.